uh, accomplished over the last four years. Today, however, is not the day to go over those plans. Today, we want to uh, begin by recapping the highlights of our achievements over the past four years on which we intend to build for the next five years. I will list the highlights and over the next few days the full document of achievements will be produced and distributed. Our record is strong and we will recover stronger. There's been no government over the past 25 years that has had as long a stretch of quarterly, unbroken stretch of quarterly economic growth as this government. Under the Andrew Holness, Holness administration, uh, we have, Jamaica has enjoyed an unbroken stretch of 14 quarters of economic growth, which has never been achieved since we started measuring growth quarterly by any prior Jamaican administration. Under this administration, we have had record low unemployment. Our unemployment rate uh, fell to 7.2% in January of 2020, the lowest in over 58 years of measuring unemployment. Related to that, the number of persons employed in Jamaica rose to the highest level ever of 1.269 million people as at January 2020. Never before then have as many Jamaicans been employed at the same time. Within that data, the gender gap in unemployment collapsed. It, when we began four years ago, that gender gap was as wide as 10 points, i.e., the male unemployment rate was approximately 10 percentage points lower than the female unemployment rate. Under this administration, due to the policies that have been pursued, that gender gap was obliterated. And the difference in female unemployment versus male unemployment fell to just over 2%, approximately 2.5%. We have had low and stable inflation for the past four years. Poverty declined under our administration by 40% to the lowest levels in 10 years. We abolished the minimum business tax. We abolished the asset tax, both of which were inhibitors to small business. We abolished the ad valorem tax the ad valorem stamp duty charge on real estate transactions and on financial transactions. An ad valorem stamp duty acted as an inhibitor to those who were in the market to purchase their homes. I've had that experience myself, whereby with the high rates of ad valorem stamp duties that existed, you would need another mortgage just to be able to pay the closing costs. We looked at that and we abolished those high charges making it easier for persons to purchase their homes. We slashed the transfer tax on real estate transactions and very importantly, the, we dramatically increased the exemption threshold for the application of estate transfer tax on the death of an individual. Up until this administration, persons would begin to pay the death tax at a level of $100,000. So if someone passed away and they left assets just over $100,000, the government would step in and say, before those assets can be transferred to someone else, we want the government to share in those assets. We took a look at that and said, that level was far too low. And we increased it by thousands of percentage points from $100,000 to $20 million, which means that many estates that have been tied up in the Administrator, Administrator General's Department and in other areas, due to an inability of persons to afford the estate transfer tax, can now transfer those properties, those assets to their beneficiaries without having the obligation of paying 
attacks to the government of Jamaica. We increased the GCT threshold from $3 million to $10 million. And that, what that meant is thousands of businesses that would, small businesses that otherwise would have had to file for G GCT, to register for GCT, to have the complexity of dealing with those monthly filings and very high, high charges if you are late, we relieved thousands of small businesses from that obligation by moving the GCT threshold from $3 million to $10 million. We introduced for the very first time the MSME tax credit for medium and small and micro enterprises of $350,000. That is, any MSME who files a tax return, the government would contribute to, in a profitable position, the government would contribute $350,000 towards the tax obligation of that MSME. That's prior to now unheard of in Jamaica the kind of creativity that we have applied to, the policy, to, to our policies in the interest of the Jamaican people. We restored the junior stock exchange, which gave an avenue for uh, medium-sized enterprises to access equity capital at competitive uh, prices and rates. We made government more efficient by reintegrating public bodies into their parent ministries, thereby releasing uh, capital that could be deployed in other areas. We increased the income tax threshold to $1.5 million when many said it could not be done. By increasing the threshold to $1.5 million, what it means is that 80% of those who are on PAYE no longer pay income tax. That's over 440,000 400, people due to the policies of this administration. A tax that everyone pays is a general consumption tax. And because it's a tax that everyone pays, we thought one of the good things that we could do is to relieve persons of that burden by reducing the general consumption tax by 1.5 percentage points from 16.5% to 15%. This is the first time that the rate of GCT is being decreased without at the same time increasing other taxes. So we would have gone through the financial year 2021, 2020, 2021, the budget, with no new taxes. Even in the face of a pandemic, when the first supplementary estimates were tabled, there were no new taxes. In the prior year, 2019-20, there were no new taxes. In the year before that, 2018-19, there were no new taxes. In the two prior years of 2017-2018 and 2016-2017, we implemented the increase of the income tax threshold, which meant that 80% of persons no longer pay income tax, and at the same time, we introduced other measures that uh, would have made that possible. However, in those two years, there were no net new taxes. Interest rates have been reduced 10 times since 2018, allowing uh, persons to afford homes. Mortgage rates, uh, beginning with the number six, have never been seen in Jamaica, certainly for the last 40 years, which has opened up new possibilities for many Jamaicans. We introduced the Tourism Workers pension scheme, which has given the opportunity to hundreds of thousands of persons who work in the tourism sector. Uh, the number is as high as uh, 200,000. Uh, Minister Bartlett says 300,000 uh, persons who now have an opportunity to save for their retirement. We have workers who work in the hotel rooms chambermaids, persons who work as bartenders in hotels, who work in landscaping in hotels, who work in the kitchen in hotels, the, who prior to now would have worked all their lives without the opportunity for a pension, reach retirement age with 
inadequate preparation for their elderly years. Under this administration, we saw that as an inequity, and we introduced the Tourism Workers' Pension Scheme to give persons who work in that sector the opportunity for a stable and secure retirement. And more than that, the government contributed $1 billion towards the retirement of persons working in the tourism industry through the Tourism Workers' Pension Scheme. We broadened ownership of the Jamaican economy, something that we believe to be of vital importance in ensuring that our motto, motto of equal rights and justice is achieved and maintained. Ensuring that Jamaica is one where we all have a stake, where we all have the opportunity of ownership, has been a driving force of the policy of this administration. As such, we fulfilled on our manifesto promise to bring to market uh, state enterprises. Uh, Wigton Wind Farm was brought to the Jamaica Stock Exchange in 2019, and we had over 30,000 persons participate as shareholders. Broker dealers, banking and financial institutions had lines wrapping around their buildings with ordinary, everyday Jamaicans going in for an opportunity to own a piece of Jamaica. We didn't stop there. In the next year, we brought to the Jamaican market Trans-Jamaica Highway, a major infrastructure asset which, on, which up until now has been owned by international investors. Jamaicans did not have an opportunity to own this major infrastructure asset. We were able to orchestrate a series of transactions which gave Jamaicans the opportunity to own Trans-Jamaica Highway. Again, over 30,000, I believe 35,000 Jamaicans lined up for that opportunity and participated in what was one of the largest, IP, in what is the largest initial public offering ever in Jamaica's history. We launched the Marcus Garvey public sector graduate scholarships, which will give an opportunity to persons employed in the public sector to pursue graduate studies at the most prestigious universities around the world and the best universities right here in Jamaica. Persons employed in the public service will be able to pursue graduate degrees in health policy and education policy, in economic policy, in security, and in many other areas through this $1 billion scholarship program, the largest scholarship program of its kind in Jamaica's history. Up until now, graduate scholarships have all been provided by foreign institutions, the Commonwealth Scholarship, the Rhodes Scholarship, the Fulbright Scholarship, the Shevening Scholarship, and several others. We again saw that as a gap in our architecture, and the government of Jamaica has stepped in to ensure that we develop the human capital that's going to be required to take Jamaica into the future. So under this scholarship program, 150 Jamaicans over the next five years will have an opportunity to sharpen their skills, to increase their networking, and to contribute to their homeland when they return. They'll be able to take up scholarships at the University of the West Indies, at the University of Technology, at King's College in London, at John Hopkins, Johns Hopkins in the United States, at Harvard University in the United States, and at Oxford University in the United Kingdom, all courtesy of a $1 billion graduate scholarship program that has been launched by this administration. We, as far as students are concerned, we took a look at some of the procedures in student loan and we introduced new measures that will increase and broaden access. We increased the grace period after graduation for persons to begin paying for student loans from six months to 14 months. So students now have an opportunity to look for jobs for a whole year and two months, whereas up until now, they've only had six months before having to repay their loans. At the same time, we reduced the cost of student loans. The pay-as-you-go loan was reduced as low as 4%, making student loans more affordable. 
we also introduced a program to uh, incentivize greater volunteerism in the Jamaican society, whereby persons who have a student loan and join a charitable institution in good standing will have their student loan forgiven for each year that they remain in that charitable organization at 10% a year. Our economy, despite the pandemic, structurally is at one of the strongest levels ever. Our debt is the lowest in 20 years. Our credit rating from the major credit rating agencies are the highest they've been in some cases in 10 years, in other cases the highest they've been in 20 years. We have strengthened the resilience of the Jamaican economy by capitalizing a contingencies fund for the first time. For the last 30 years, our contingencies fund has had $100 million, which you all know is woefully inadequate to respond to any disaster. We saw that as a gap, and we increased the capitalization of the contingencies fund from $100 million to $4.5 billion. And we did it just in time, not knowing what the future held. The pandemic came. And before we had the opportunity to pass a supplementary budget, we were able to draw down on this contingencies fund to provide social and economic relief to Jamaicans. That is the benefit of good policy, of good government, and of good planning. We have spent a lot on social support. We increased allocations to school feeding and to the PATH program by 83% over the past four years. We have introduced a social pension whereby elderly persons who do not have an NIS pension and don't have any source of income and are evidently in poverty will have the opportunity for the first time to receive a regular stipend from the government of Jamaica. This is not something that we are promising. This is something that we, ha we are already implementing. And we believe that that is in the interest of ensuring that Jamaica is a place of equity and a place of compassion. We would have engaged in major transactions over the last few years to uh, attract investment to Jamaica and increase uh, the efficacy of services. We were able to complete the divestment by way of public-private partnership of the Kingston Container Terminal, which would have unleashed over 400 million US dollars of investment into the Jamaican economy to prepare our port for the arrival of post-Panamax vessels. We were able to successfully engage in the privatization of the Norman Manley International Airport by way of PPP again, whereas in a pre previous administration that went to tender and there were zero bidders. We look at the errors that were made and under this administration, we launched that initiative once more, and we had eight qualified bidders and eventually a successful transaction that will lead to an extension of the runway and an upgrade of the Norman Manley International Airport. We are engaged in investments to improve the quality of life of Jamaican people. We'd have launched the $1.3 billion Close Harbor Beach project in St. James, which will see 16 acres of beachfront property being available to the Jamaican people in perpetuity uh, in a restored and upgraded format that will provide recreation, exercise, social activity, and will boost local tourism for all the people of St. James and for those who wish to come from further afield. We launched the $5 billion Moran Bay Urban Center project, which will see massive investment come into Morant Bay and St. Thomas, and we'll see government buildings and private sector buildings in one convenient location for the people of St. Thomas. We have launched the multi-billion dollar Naga Head Tech Park, which will bring jobs and opportunities to, the, to persons who live, or more jobs and opportunities to those who live in St. Catherine. We have engaged in major upgrades to our, our road uh, network 
through major infrastructure uh, investments that increase the productivity of capital, increase the productivity of labor in the Jamaican economy. We would have uh, made significant uh, upgrade developments to the Mandela Highway, to the Hagley Park Road, to the Constant Spring, we might as well call them highway, to Constant Spring, to Barbican, and when persons said it could not be done, when persons said we would have to uh, do it sequentially and make it take five years instead of the time that we did it in, we, through the leadership of the Prime Minister, uh, made sure that those projects were implemented on time and, well, made sure that those projects were implemented uh, in a way that increases uh, the efficiency of movement and makes new modes of work uh, possible because people can get around. In addition to that, there's a Mac field to ferry uh, road that we uh, that has also benefited from improvement. We launched the South Coast Improvement Highway, which will bring jobs and investment into eastern Jamaica and open up new opportunities for housing within closer proximity uh, to the metropolitan capital. That South Coast Improvement Project as well will lengthen the existing East-West Highway and taking it closer uh, to the uh, to Mandeville. In addition, we have started on the Montego Bay Ring Road Project. So our infrastructure improvements are greatly improving our ability to get around in Jamaica, making new modes of business, work, and play possible. We have brought a revolution to housing in Jamaica. This again was a manifesto promise of ours. Under this administration, more houses, more housing starts have occurred than any previous administration in the last 25 years. We have had over 20,000 housing starts uh, from, we've had over 20,000 housing starts over the last four years, and that does not include the Housing Association of Jamaica, which has launched uh, very ambitious projects which bring affordable housing into St. Catherine, uh, houses that cost five and a half million dollars uh, through the St. Catherine Estates Project, and the Housing Agency of Jamaica was one that was uh, in that was restored under this administration. Its financials were in shambles, and under this administration, we have, uh, we have restored those finances. The 20,000 houses represents uh, two and a half times the number of houses by the NHT that were started under the previous administration. We've made landmark amendments uh, to legislation involving land, where land ownership will, will be regularized, dramatic improvements to land titling and registration, which will unlock value for thousands of Jamaicans, giving persons who security of tenure where their legitimate interest has existed for decades. We have had major, and, and, and those improvements in land are designed to uh, empower Jamaicans and to ensure that Jamaica is a place of equity. Our investments in water far outstrip uh, the historical average or norm. Over $28 billion has been invested in water infrastructure over the past four years. The Essex Valley uh, project, which had a long uh, gestation period, has been commissioned, and over 20,000 residents and 3,300 households will now have the benefit of receiving uh, portable pipe water uh, upon completion. Uh, we've had we have over 26 projects in rural Jamaica which will bring water to 56,000 residents. Under this administration, we increased the allocation to rural water sevenfold, which has made that possible. Over 12 catchment tanks have been rehabilitated and work is ongoing on 14 others. We have 38 rainwater harvesting solutions. We commence rehabilitation of the Greater Portmore Wastewater Treatment Plant, and portable water has been brought to sections of St. James, where for 38 years, those areas have not had portable water. Portable water has been brought to sections of Eastern Hanover, where for 48 years, they have not benefited 
from the, the right to portable water. We have made major investments in fire safety. Uh, a new four-story Barnet Street fire station has been established, and we have rehabilitated or are in the process of rehabilitating fire stations in Yalas and Port Maria, in Frankfield and Falmouth, in Maypen, and in other areas. Our pub public services have received uh, a boost of investment with new fire trucks. We've had over 65 garbage trucks and over 105,000 LED lights have been installed and we paid JPS the seven billion dollars that was owed to them. There was a time when the Jamaican government owed JPS for two years for street lights. Under this administration we paid those debts and are now current with the JPS. We made major investments in security, in, in police cars, in equipment, in police stations, in motorbikes, in the Jamaica Eye Initiative. Over 26,000 Jamaicans got a, a chance through the apprenticeship program, housing opportunity, production and employment. Over 146,000 got a training through the HART program. We have had major investments in our health infrastructure uh, with new uh, $10 million children's heart center at the Bustamante Hospital. We have had new oncology and cancer treatment centers at the St. Joseph Hospital and at Cornwall Regional Hospital. Over 120,000 Jamaicans have been added as beneficiaries to the National Health Fund increasing their beneficiaries by 50%, the number of beneficiaries by 50% under this administration. The Western Children's Hospital, with seven-story building, 220 beds, has been commissioned and will be the most modern children's hospital in the Caribbean when it's finished. Our vector control management has delivered for the Jamaican people, and Jamaica has gotten uh, international recognition and local recognition for our handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are making major investments in, uh, we have made major investments in our major health facilities uh, across Jamaica, Victoria Jubilee, Cornwall Regional, St. Anne's Bay, Black River, and many others. We would, Jamaica stands tall in the international community. For the first time, a Jamaican Prime Minister is invited to the G7 grouping of nations. Jamaica is, has been represented at the G20 has been represented at the conference uh, of BRICS nations. And Jamaica's uh, advice and leadership is, is sought in international fora. Across the breadth of the economy, infrastructure, gender, public services, uh, health, education, security, transportation, and mining, our record is strong, and we will recover stronger. Over to you, Babsy. Thank you so much.